I'm going to talk to you guys today about stem cell transplants. Did you ever think a blind person could get their sight back, or a deaf person could regain their hearing, or even that a man could be cured of HIV? Well, all of these things have been accomplished with stem cell transplants. I'm going to focus on stem cell transplants related to cancer patients. I will discuss what stem cells are, how they fight cancer, and the process of donating and receiving them. Um, my best friend in high school was diagnosed our junior year with a type of cancer called carcinoid cancer. And carcinoid cancer is a really rare, slow-growing cancer that usually um, shows up as a tumor. And she had actually gone into the emergency room with stomach pains and come to find out she needed her appendix removed. So during the process of getting, of getting the scans for her appendix, the doctors had recognized some unusual spots in her chest. And at first they told her that it was probably like bacteria or like a virus from <coughs> traveling out of the country. But after they tested it, they um, realized it was cancer and they actually diagnosed her with lymphoma and told her that she had two years of chemotherapy ahead of her, which is actually really unusual because usually like the amount of chemotherapy is about six months. So um, then they went and saw several other doctors and got a lot of other opinions and they came to the conclusion that she actually has carcinoid cancer. Um, the cancer had spread throughout her entire chest and so um, she actually just have, has gotten several very painful surgeries um, to remove all of her lymph nodes in her chest as well as her entire left lung. So even through all of that, she's still battling it today. I'm one of the strongest people I know. And I have a picture. She's on the left, and that's me on the right. It's at our senior prom last year. It seems incredible to me how more recently I've heard of more and more cancer cases. Ever since my friend was diagnosed, I've been active in educating myself about her illness and anything else that is involved. We seem to hear so many theories today about why cancer is showing up more in our generation than any other. Some say it's the environment or the food that we eat, but I don't think we'll ever really know. All we can do is educate ourselves on the treatments and how to improve it for those fighting these diseases. I am going to educate all of you a little bit about what a stem cell transplant is, what it can do, and how it's performed. Stem cells are immature cells that create more blood forming cells and that mature into three type of blood cells. There's white blood cells which fight the infection, red blood cells which, which carry oxygen, and the platelets which help with blood clots. And they can actually divide with no limit as long as the individual is alive. Um, chemotherapy and radiation affect the, cell, the cells that divide rapidly, so stem cell transplants are used to replace those cells killed by the chemotherapy or the radiation to, with new healthy cells. And uh, they're most commonly used for lymphoma and leukemia patients but aren't limited to those cancers. And researchers have discovered that they not only um, replace the damaged cells but they can also cure the cancer, which is good. Okay, there's um, three types of stem cell transplants that they can receive. They can um, receive their own stem cells, um, which I'll explain how you do later. Um, they receive stem cells from an identical twin if they have one, or stem cells from a family member or an unknown donor. And um, when receiving the stem cells from an unknown donor, they have a higher risk for side effects of the procedure. Um, but when receiving your own, you have a higher risk of disease and reoccurrence. So the decision to do one or the other depends on the, the type of cancer, the age, and the other treatment options available. Um, to donate his or her own cells, an individual needs to have a sufficient number of healthy cells. So they are usually given a drug um, to help increase the white cell growth factor and um, so they can collect for their own stem cells. Um, you may wonder how the donors of stem cells are matched with these patients. Well, the donors, the unknown donors or the family members, they, um, we all have 
different proteins in our stem cells. So um, the protein is called HLA, and they use the stem cells from the donor who matches the patient's own stem cells, so the, the amount of HLA. The higher number, number of matching HLA antigens, the better chance for success. And family members are more likely to be a match, but only 25 to 30 percent of siblings have matching HLA antigens. Um, and HLA matching is more efficient if they have the same ethnic background. And identical twins always have the same HLA antigens. And um, the next step after finding a donor, if one is needed, is to get the stem cells. To abstain the stem cells, the donor is given medicine that increases the production of the cells into the bloodstream. And the blood is removed from a large vein that goes into a machine and removes the stem cells. And then the blood is returned to the donor and the stem cells are frozen until given to the patient. And it usually takes about four to six hours. Um, they can also be obtained by um, the umbilical cord. When um, for this to happen, the mother decides if she wants to do it either publicly or commercially. And if it's publicly, she can donate to anyone who matches. Or if it's commercially, it's stored in case a family member needs it. And um, so the umbilical cord is cut, and then it's processed, and then frozen. But um, only a little blood comes from it, so it's usually used for just a child. And it can be frozen for up to 50 years. Um, and umbilical cord blood stem cell transplants are less prone to the rejection. And this is probably because the cells have not yet developed and that they can be recognized and attacked by the recipient's immune system. Also because the umbilical cord lacks well-developed um, immune cells, there's a less chance that the transplanted cells will attack the recipient's body. The final step is giving the stem cells to the recipient. People who get the allogenic stem cell transplants, the one from a family member or an unknown donor, first receive high doses of chemotherapy or radiation to kill the cancer cells, and then prepare their immune system to prevent it from rejecting the donor cells. After the patient receives high doses of anti-cancer drugs or radiation, the patient receives the stem cells through an IV taking one to five hours. And as you can see in the picture, it's through um, like her chest area. My friend had this when they thought that she needed chemotherapy, but they put in this port in your chest because they can't always use the veins in your arms or your veins will get messed up. So they put a port in your chest and it actually, it like sticks out a little bit and it just acts, it, it, it's like a tube that connects to your heart. Um, after receiving the stem cells, the cells have been processed, began a process called engraftment which is when the cells travel to the bone marrow and mature into the cells they're supposed to be. This occurs two to four weeks after the transplant. In the two to four week period, patients are in isolation in a protected room on antibiotics to prevent infection. Stamps, stem cells have done allogenic have a 20% cure rate. The decision to have a transplant is not an easy one. The cancer team must compare the risks with the disease itself versus the risks of the transplant procedure. The stage of the disease, the, patient, the patient's age, the time of diagnosis to transplant, donor type, and the patient's overall health are all part of the decision. Stem cell transplants can be very expensive. The total cost can easily reach $100,000 or more. Wrapping up, I'd like to end with a story. Zayla was, another, was a patient who was cured from stem cell transplants. She was only six years old and had two years of chemotherapy to treat her leukemia. When she was only three, she was diagnosed with a severe type of leukemia, but the doctors believed that they could treat her. Near the end of her treatment, she relapsed. She received stem cells from her oldest sister. They repaired her bone marrow and attacked any of the leukemia that was left. Today's Zayla's bone marrow and immune system are cured.